You didn't see it last night, but on Showtime, we did some stuff about the Kansas City offense, and I thought uh, Steve Smith was I very saw good. It. Goes, I saw it, you jerk. Oh. I watched the show. Oh, you did? Okay, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. I just, I, you know, I know you're busy. I wasn't being smart. Damn, you called me a jerk. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. I get called worse than that every day. Oh, gosh. He's one to talk. What's up, everybody? Paul Burmeister is in see today. You. What up, homie? Uh, Chris Sims unbuttoned. We got a good one today. First of all, yeah, he gets, when I don't watch it, he'll be like, oh, yeah. you never watched me. And then I said, I watched it, you jerk. And he's like, oh, gosh, you called me a jerk. It's more, more and more just like you two sitting on the couch all the time. Like every week it gets a little bit more yes. familiar and comfortable for well, better or worse. Good. Well, Eddie, we'll see how it goes today. It might be better or worse, too, because yeah. I talked to him a little while ago. He's like, what do you want to talk about? I was like, I don't know. I was like, I like it better when you riff anyways. So right. look at the league. Tell me some things that jump out, and we'll talk about it on the podcast. So right. we don't know where he's coming or what he's coming with Good. or not, but Big F*** <laughs> will be on in a few minutes, a.k.a. Phil Sims, a.k.a. Super Bowl Twenty One MVP, okay? It's good for the family there just to plug that a little bit. <laughs> um, all right. We uh, I always would accept your rate, review, anything on the, the pod. I know we haven't got to a lot of ask me anythings and things like that. Uh, we need to do a better job of that. But we are going to have one of those like sessions here uh, a little more in depth than we did last week, certainly. Okay. And then today, we're going to unveil a new segment. We're going to try to make it a little bit more listener friendly. All right. And we're going to unveil a new segment called What the F*** happened okay <laughs> and it'll say what the hell happened on the title okay when you watch these videos was it your idea well uh you know i don't know it was not my idea this was a, a collaborative idea where i feel like it might have been matt casey producer or pete d and i can never say pete's last name so i just pete say pete d okay yeah. so pete d we kind of talked about it a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and then on monday I kind of text. I was like, I think we should do it. And they were like, great idea. <laughs> or I like that. And uh, so we're going to go with it. And we're going to hit some some major uh, moments of this past week six uh, uh, just uh, throughout the league, whether it's some of the Jets offense, the 92-yard Robbie Anderson play, the two-point conversion, a Baker, uh, Baker Mayfield red zone interception, the failed fourth and goal by the Cleveland Browns. And we're going to hit the Minnesota Stephon Diggs touchdown pass. And I'm going to give you kind of the rundown on what happened with Trey Flowers and David Bakhtiari okay. and how that unfolded. I kept a pretty close eye on that as I watched film. Uh, I just watched that film a little while ago, so I really got a good feel of it, and I think I could uh, explain that to people. Now, we got some news we got to hit first before Breaking we dive news in. last night. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. You run with it, kid. The uh, little bit of a corner trade from Jacksonville yeah. to L.A. Awesome. Jalen Ramsey for two first-round picks to the Rams and a fourth. So, like, as I'm hosting hockey last night, I'm also thinking, I'm like, I got so many things I want to hit on with Chris right. regarding this trade. Yeah. Number one, right. when you watch the Rams, right. they ebb and flow. They're good sometimes. They're bad. Yep. How many times have you thought, boy, that they would be better? Their problems would be fixed right. if they had another elite-level corner. Okay. Did you ever think that? Okay. Well, I, I've thought this. Okay. Not that I necessarily thought, ooh, they needed another elite-level corner. I mean, and we know Akeem Tlaib, he's been put on IR, so I don't know what the deal is. He can come back, you know, in a few weeks. Maybe that happens. Of course, they trade Marcus Peters. My big thing, more than anything, and this goes back to last year, really, the game, the regular season game, Saints-Rams, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and if you remember, Marcus Peters got beat on that late touchdown yeah, yeah. by Michael Thomas, a seam pass. It was maybe a 70-yard pass, something like that, for a touchdown. Kind of sealed the game and ended it. And remember, that's how the feud started. Right. Because they were like, oh, we're comfortable with that matchup, Sean Payton said. And, you know, Marcus Peters like, keep talking that shit. Right. Keep talking that shit. So um, that, though, was the moment the Rams stopped playing man-to-man, -man, really. Okay. And I think they realized that Marcus Peters was more of a zone corner and that they might have just have to play zone and let our front four get after it. Now, the thing is that I would just say where they probably did not like that aspect, Wade Phillips likes to play man. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what made him famous for that 2015 Denver Bronco defense was their ability to go, oh, Chris Harris Jr., oh, Akib Tlaib, oh, Bradley Roby. We can every now and then, not every now and then, a good majority of the time, we can play man-to-man -man and do a whole bunch of shit with the other eight guys to mess up your defense. So this allows them to, to do more what they want to do. I think it opens up the box of tri of creativity for Wade worth, to now go. Worth two first-round picks? I think it is worth two first-round picks. I know the players. I, I know the, the players oh, yeah, value okay, yeah. is that, but I'm talking more about the scheme and the team. For I the think team, it is. I think it, it is. It. I do. I okay. think it is worth it. I, I think... Um, 
Okay, there's, this is an interesting dynamic, first off. First off, I think Jalen Ramsey is worth what, what he got traded for. You know, two first-round picks, a fourth. The Rams are going, we're going to be picking somewhere between 20 and 32 these two years. I mean, right. that's their thought. They right. think they're getting in the playoffs this year. I mean, they're not going, oh, we're going we're gonna to fold tents and have a top-10 pick this year and going to give it away. No, they're still in the fight of things. And just like everybody, to remind everybody out there, okay, yeah, they lost to the Bucks at home, okay. Um, the Seahawks game. I mean, their field goal kicker, who's usually money, he makes that 99 out of 100 times. He missed that. So this is not like a team that's, like, dysfunctional. And then last week, again, I'd like to remind everybody, you know, the game was 7-7, and it was third and goal on the one. The Rams had the ball, and they ran it up the middle twice and didn't get a touchdown to where they would have been up 14-7, and who knows what happens there. It wasn't like they got blown out of the world uh, against the 49ers. And it was 20-7. to They took a physical beating, but they were in that game and had chances nonetheless. So they're not giving up. But uh, I do think it's worth it. First off, you know, Jalen Ramsey, people are going to go, oh, it's two first-round picks. Well, one of those picks is Jalen Ramsey. He's special. And the dynamic I think that's interesting is, I mean, and again, I haven't thought about this a lot. Maybe I need to think a little farther. And you tell me if one pops to your head. Mm -hmm. Have we ever seen, like, the top front seven player in football, the top D lineman in football on the same defense with the top corner, corner. in football? I mean, that's an interesting combination. Right. In the day and age of the NFL where it's about pass and pressuring the yeah. quarterback and creating havoc in the backfield. Yeah. That's where I think it's an interesting dynamic. You're really, really going to let Wade Phillips get very creative with two different levels of his defense where, right. you know, like the New England Stephon Gilmore thing. Oh, Gilmore, you got him. We could do some creative stuff over here mm -hmm. with the other five guys in the secondary. You know, they already do that, the Rams, with Aaron Donald. They move him around and create matches so some guys that shouldn't be blocking him have to end right. up blocking him. And now they'll be able to do things like we just talked about with New England and Gilmore with Ramsey in the back end where here's right. man and you other five guys or whatever, we're going to be creative over here to stop the bunch set or whatever else it is. And that, that reminds me of yeah. a question I had last night, just what you said now about right. the, the, the front end and the back end. It's kind of a roundabout way of getting to it, but you and I sit in on meetings at Notre Dame on Friday. Yes. Clark Lee, defensive coordinator for Notre Dame. Sure. I don't remember if it was this Friday or a couple Fridays ago. Right. Talked about his defense played better in the second half as opposed to the first because they were aligning coverage with the front much better. Sure. They matched it better. Sure. So I was thinking about last night regarding this trade. How does it allow Wade Phillips to, to align what he's doing in the back end more with the front end of what you're talking about. Well, yeah, like so now he'll be able to add another level to that where he'll go, oh, I'm a little reluctant to blitz because I don't feel that good with like, oh, blitz zone and do things like that. There's just too many holes because they want to play zone coverage and do all of that. Now I think he's going to be able to go, okay, I can do some creative things there because I'm going to have one guy who I'm going to go, he can shut this guy down and I don't have to worry about it. And then he might be able to align not only the mismatches up front with an Aaron Donald on, let's say, a, a right tackle for the 49ers last night, last week who was making his first start ever, but then even maybe add a blitzer or a blitz, two blitzers to the package as well to go, okay, you know, I don't love doing this, but I'll roll the dice right here because I'm pretty confident in this guy. And now I'll try to find a pretty cre creative zone on the other side here against that zone, uh, against that bunch package where it might not be five guys over there, but maybe it's just three. Right. But either way, I'm hoping that the pressure gets home along with them having to figure out how to block Aaron Donald. And now Ramsey's locked on, you know, whoever it may be, Debo Samuel or DK Metcalf, or I'm just throwing around teams that might be playing. Mm -hmm. And that's where it gets interesting. But this is more... Hey, it's for this year, okay? It's for the future. I don't think Jalen Ramsey goes here unless he thinks there's a future. Right. I don't think the Rams bring him unless there's a future. Why would you, why would you give up two first-round picks right. if you weren't interested in keeping him for a He's going to, right. And I would think that, really, Jalen Ramsey, this whole beef happened. He played on the Thursday night after the beef, remember? Mm -hmm. Against the Titans. Now, he hasn't played in the three games since. Right. And I would bet you sometime between that Thursday night game and now – he had a good inkling that, ooh, there's two or three teams that like me, and I would think that the Rams were, of course, one of them, and he had a good feeling about it, and they probably told him, hey, we don't, we don't have the money. Fi we, we, wink, wink, shake, shake. We got the money figured out. I know there's some minor details, but we'll get it done sometime here in the next few months. Mm -hmm. and, 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 again, you know, McVay, Wade Phillips, Les Snead, they've created a culture there that is special. 
You know, it is. Just like right. we talk about New England. I mean, they have personalities there every year, and they all gel together. Oh, Nandama Kunsu might mess up their defense. Oh, Akib Talib might mess up their defense. Oh, it's Robert Woods. It's Brandon Cooks. I mean, it doesn't matter because right. McVay and Wade Phillips are unbelievable people skills people, mm -hmm. uh, if that makes sense. They're good communicators. They keep it real. There's no bullshit. Right. You know where you stand. I mean, Dante Fowler was a problem in Jacksonville. He went yeah. there, and we haven't heard peep shit about that. There's an element of recruiting. Peep I know, shit. I know that's, that's a that's, technical that's, phrase. <laughs> peep shit. <laughs> Hopefully that'll that'll roll its way back in here. Yes, yeah, for sure it will. In college they have recruiting though, but there is free agency. The yes. Players have a choice here. So everything you're talking about uh, with this culture and the way they communicate and it's in LA. Yes. They have a young quarterback. Yes. I would think, I mean, it's one of the two or three most desirable places to be. A hundred percent. So, that, I mean, it all, it all adds up to him. Players want to be stars, and he's a star, and he's in Hollywood, and they're good, and they were in the Super Bowl, right. and it's Sean McVay, and it's, I mean, first of all, it's a brilliant move from L.A. on that, so you want to be the king of L.A.? I mean, the Chargers are just like, nobody's even think about them anymore. Right. I mean, the Rams have really embraced the Hollywood, we're L.A., we're the team to watch. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And uh, it was how a great concerned. move by them. How concerned are you that they don't have a first round pick until after 2021 I yeah, yeah I, uh, I mean it stinks I mean of course you'd like one but okay it's not that big of a deal mm -hmm. you know again in the modern day NFL with free agency and you know I think Les Snead and Sean McVay and Wade Phillips they're good enough evaluators where they feel like we'll find the right guys whether it be free agency or later in the draft that we feel yeah, they, they might not be marquee names, but we feel like we can put them in here and build some depth at this position with guys that maybe not everybody saw the value in which we saw it as well. Right. Um, now, they have the other moves. Oh, this is a great tweet. you got to check this that? out. Sean McVay even looks good as a 60-year-old guy, <laughs> right? I mean, is he Hulk Hogan or Alec Baldwin with a really weird uh, – he looks kind of Alec well. Baldwin with a yeah. with a weird beard mustache. But, yeah, he'll age well. He's a handsome guy. I don't think he's going to be quite that old at and, um, 22. I don't know. Yeah, right. 20, I don't think he'll be that old either. Uh, and um, and I'm sure his me, really beautiful appreciate. Eastern European fiance, yeah. I'm sure we'll still like him when he looks like that. So don't, don't doesn't matter. Right, exactly. Um, the other part, the yes. other part of this, yeah. Marcus Peters yeah. to Baltimore. Right. I, th I think I remember this correctly. Yeah. Before the season, early in the season, you thought Baltimore defensively with their backs could have one of the best defensive backfields yeah, in the league. I did, yeah. Some injuries. Yep. So how much better is the team that's already the best in the AFC North? Right. How much better are they? Okay, well, I think when, when I look at uh, the Baltimore Ravens, there's a few things at play. One, you know, Jimmy Smith got hurt early in the year, so yep. he's not there. Now, last week, they lose Jeff Tony Jefferson, who's, you know, one of the better safeties in football. Added to that, they can't pressure the quarterback. Yeah. They have a real issue there. Speaking of back end and front end not going together. Exactly right. Yeah. So now they, this is going to give them the flexibility a little bit to go, okay, Humphrey, okay, Brandon Carr, mm -hmm. okay, Marcus Peters, and um, Jimmy Smith will be back at some point. And now – we can be uh, not DMP. I was going to say DMPs. Jimmy um, Smith did come back to practice. Oh, he's back week. to practice this yeah. week. That's good. So I knew he was coming back at some point. I didn't know when it was happening. But now, um, my man, I'm blanking on my guy's name. I uh, wink Martindale, okay, the go. defensive coordinator yep. uh, who I was with in Denver. He can do like a little bit we just talked about with Abe Phillips. Now he can play with all those other guys when he's got to play New England and it's a crucial third down and Tom Brady and he's going, damn, Tom, I can't just let Tom sit back there all day long anymore. Hey, you man up Gordon, you man up this guy, you man up that guy, and I'm going to send some creative blitz mm -hmm. to outnumber them or put some stress on them. And they can have, you know, for lack of a better phrase, ball, more balls to do that now yeah. with three really good cover guys. Marcus Peters is not a shutdown man-to-man -man type corner. That's not his cup of tea, but he's still good Quality. at it. Yeah. He is. And he's a playmaker. He'll fit within the culture of that team. A bunch of badass renegades. I mean, he fits yeah. that right, right, in, right away. And I like that trade for them. And I understand them getting rid of Kenny Young, which is the other part who goes to the Rams. They have an issue at middle linebacker, yeah. too. Corey Littleton's their only difference maker right there. Now you get a guy at Kenny Young where Kenny Young not playing a whole lot in Baltimore – from UCLA, mm -hmm. which is in LA, which is where the Rams are, which you would think they have a great feel for the players that are at UC, right. USC and UCLA. Most teams usually know the colleges that are in their area really well and have the right connections, so they like that fit. That was good by them, too. Last piece of this, too, just before yep. we move on for the Rams. The Rams trading to get Austin Corbett from, uh, from the Cleveland Browns. I mean, they made three moves yesterday. 
This is what I respect about the Rams. They are every year chips in the middle yep. of the table. Wes we're in it. says that. We're yeah. in it to win it. We're mm -hmm. not in it to go the seventh seed or, you know, if we are the sixth seed in the playoffs, we're, go we're still in it to try to win it. And I respect that. They had issues in the interior part of their offensive line. Corbett was not playing for the Browns. And now I think this helps out the Rams a little bit on the inside of their offense right. as well. One more thought I yeah. have about yeah. everything that's happened with the defensive back trades, Marcus Peters to Baltimore, Jalen Ramsey to L.A. Yeah. I want to tie it together with something you've said a few times this season already. Okay. The New England Patriots, yep. if not the best team in the league, best two or three, yes. have the best defensive backs and the best corners in the league. Yes. And they're winning that way. Yes. It's a copycat league. No question, does, Paul. Does, does all this go together? I think it does to a degree because I think more than anything – Teams are realizing, and the Rams are probably one of them specifically, where Wade Phillips is getting frustrated. Offenses, quarterbacks and receivers and running backs are just too good at throwing and catching, and, and the offensive coordinators have too many creative ways on third and four and five to think you're going to play zone and stop that stuff like it's back in 2004 and 2005 when zone blitzes were just coming into fashion. No, everybody's seen all that stuff now. So there's too, there's too many ways to beat it you got to man up in some of those situations and make life hard. Oh, you want to try to, like, you know, you know, spread people out short and throw a little zone beater on third and four and, and get five yards in that? Oh, no. Well, you're, it's going to be tough now. Marcus Peters is going to be on him like glue, and if the throw's not perfect, he's going to pop the ball in the air, and it's going to be an interception, or maybe he just picks it off clean altogether. Um, you know, Marcus Peters, you know, the other thing, too, is, yeah, I don't think he fits totally what the Rams probably want to do because they like somebody a little bit more man-to-man. -man. Mm -hmm. And I bet you they had a little bit of an inkling of what he might be asking for money-wise as he yeah. becomes a free agent, and they probably weren't comfortable with that. So they probably just said, you know what, well, let's, uh, let's fold him and let's mm -hmm. move on and let's go to the next plan, which we got this super freak over here in Jacksonville who's ready to come to town and, and be uh, you know, more of a super freak. And I do believe we're now ready for the for the very first oh, edition. Oh, baby! This we get music. Is, we get like music or something. I don't think they have. I don't know if they have it yet because this is this is so new. It's too, too fresh. Too easy. We got to work says. our way into. We got to find sorry, the proper early. music for this segment. Yeah. Okay, but this is a new segment on Chris Sims Unbuttoned that we would like to call "What the f Happened." Okay, and we will start off with Jets Cowboys. Now, you saw the game a little bit. I mean, I know you got oh, yeah. work and crap and oh, shit yeah, yeah. to do, yep. too. Yep. Uh, it was a fascinating game. Uh, that's, that's for sure. Um, do we have to start out to, to set the table, Sam Darnold, on the Cowboys defense? Yeah, but I was going to, yes. I was going okay. to go there. Oh, we, oh, oh, we got the SOT, right? We got it here. So let's play this, okay? Before we dive, dive into this, I want everyone to hear what Sam Darnold said about this Cowboys defense after the game. They just kind of did what they do. Uh, they do it every single week. Um, it what was just um, they just play one high, occasionally two high, and you know they they like to stop the run. And I knew that I had to throw the ball today to have success, and we did that. All right, we're going to get into the the the, the big play, the, the big play, our touchdown in yep. a moment. But as long as Sam said that, right, basically said the Cowboys' defense is simple. You see the same thing? Yeah, well, I've been saying this, and I don't know. You know, I know you're not here every day, or but this is something that's concerning to me. I've been saying it on Pro Football Talk too. Simple in what way? Simple in it's two defenses. It's three deep, or it's man to man single safety. It's one safety in the back of the the back, mm -hmm. and and right down the middle, you know, center field there. And then it's either three deep zone or man to man every play, and you know they, there's never adjustments. It's Do just you a, think that they believe they can get away with it because there's such speed sideline to sideline in their front seven? Definitely. That hey, if we're simple on the back end, it's fine because our front seven is that. Good. Yes, that that is exactly what they're thinking. And uh, you know I know these coaches down there. Rod Marinelli, he was there in Tampa with me. I mean with Mike Tomlin and all those guys. And yeah, I, their his thought is let's be simple, yep. sound. I got talent, let's hustle, let's out hit, let's rally to the football, and our talent will overtake the rest. That's fine and dandy, and it's going to work a lot of the times, and it has. But here's, here's two, two weeks in a row where I'll tell you why it's not going to work if the Cowboys want to win a Super Bowl, okay? You're just not going to get away with it, one, against creative offensive coordinators, which we've seen. You know, other than the New Orleans Saints – you know, the Rams in the playoff game last year, they torched the Cowboys. Oh, last week, you know, uh, you know Aaron Rodgers, they, they torched the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Now, 
not that that's overly a creative offense, but there's enough creativity. And then to go with it, this is the second piece, when you're playing a really simple defense like that. One, it's easy on the quarterback. The quarterback comes in the line of scrimmage, and you feel comfortable mentally every play because you just go, oh, yep, oh, oh, this one's a man. Oh, set hut. Oh, this one's three deep. Set hut. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all they're doing. There's never like, ooh, I'm not sure what this is. Let me call a dummy snap count to figure out what this is. Booty five, booty five, set hut, hut. Oh, no, I don't need that. I already know what it is. Okay, so uh, that. But the other thing you're seeing then when it's simple like this, and because they rely on that front four and the front mm -hmm. seven like you're doing, yeah. front four, get there. Well, we've seen two weeks in a row quarterbacks who can move in the pocket. Yeah. Okay, that's great. You guys can only cover so long downfield when they're in man-to-man. -man. Right. Now Aaron Rodgers breaks the pocket, and it's five seconds. I don't give a shit if you got five Deion Sanders back there. Somebody's going to pop open. Right. Sam Darnold, that's where I'd like to start, was the difference in the game because of his movement in the pocket. He is phenomenal that way. Taking care of the ball, the way he shuffles around, the way he can scramble and throw on the run that way. And then his pinpoint throwing ability on throws like 30 and under – it's it's off the charts. Yeah, how about his accuracy for it's, not having played? Right, I know. It's it's. You think he'd be a little rusty, and yeah. he was like, it wasn't like he missed four seconds. Um, right. let's so dive now into that play. let's dive into the play. Ninety-two yard touchdown. Yes. Okay. Um, kind of set the table. The Jets had just made a stop defensively on a fourth and two, fourth maybe and a, short. almost fourth and three, really, which so, was a questionable moment altogether. Right. So then the offense takes over on the negative eight. Right. Um, number of questions here. Number one, yeah. Donald comes up to the line. If you can picture what was going on there. Yep. He walks up. I think there was a motion. There was. And he had some extra responsibility at the line. I, I, I can't figure out if he was going to change the play. Right. If he did change the play with a quick verbal or a quick I think it was like a kill, kill, kill or can, can, can. There okay. was two plays called. That's why they did the motion. Got it. So they do the motion because he wants to make sure – Oh, the motion goes across, and now there's three to the left, and Robbie Anderson's back to the right. He goes, I got man-to-man. -man. Yep. Coach told me when that corner goes across and it's man-to-man, -man, kill, 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 because we got a play that's going to kill, kill, kill your ass, Dallas. Right. right. And then right. it's, uh, it's ironic in a very good way. You just right. talked about a couple minutes ago about his movement in the pocket. Yes. Beautiful, how he just moved about half a yard up in the pocket to avoid that rush. Get that extra second, or extra half second. Yes, beautiful. That, that made the play. Makes the play, no question. And I'm trying to get to where my damn description is here of this play. Oh, there it is. Okay. And so, all right. So, uh, yes, you said it. The motion goes across. They do a little play action fake. He knows he's got man to man. Uh, Jeff Heath is the center safety in the middle of the field. And I would think even through film, now man-to-man, -man, he's supposed to be the deep middle, right? I would think through film study they like this, not only one, because they feel like Robbie Anderson can beat the man-to-man -man coverage, but two, that maybe Jeff Heath is a little too hungry to come down mm -hmm. into the run fake and maybe just pause is a little too much for those type of coverages. So, uh, set hut, Sam Darnold gets the ball underneath center, gives a little play action fake to the weak side, and not that Jeff Heath, like, flies downfield and just goes, oh, my gosh, I'm going to stop the run, but it made him just stutter a second instead of just backpedaling into, his, into center field. Now, the route on the outside with Robbie Anderson, and this is who the play was for. It was for him and only him, and let's try to burn Shadobie Wuze over there. And he basically ran 10 to 12 yards, did a little stutter, like he might run a curl route, right? Like, oh, I'm getting ready to break down and run a curl route. Just stuttered, and then bam, stepped on the accelerator again and runs right by him. And Sam, after comes out of the play action fake, he just takes a look just to make sure, ooh, Jeff Heath isn't way back there. I can throw it, and he throws it a little inside away from the corner, right. bam, 92-yard touchdown. Why? Because they're predictable. They don't do enough on defense. They had a game plan specifically for this, and this was the turning point of the game because now the game went from 7-3 to three to 14-3, to three, right. and they were in a position of power, and Dallas was playing from behind. I thought it was a great example, too, of something like – you hear about quarterbacks who can throw a good deep ball. It's not that you can throw it 65 yards. No, it doesn't. It's not. that you can throw that 50-yard ball with the perfect amount of arc on it. Exactly. It's accurate, but you're not trying to be perfect with it. You're letting the receiver run underneath it. And his movement in the pocket and just his talent on that 50-yard ball really stood out to me. Definitely. It, it did. And because that was Robert Quinn who came around the edge. Yeah. So he avoided him yes. to step up to make that throw. And that's where Darnold's special. And you're right. The deep ball throwers, it's not all about – you don't have to throw at 70. It's about – 
pick, figuring out the proper trajectory to your guy, when to get it out of your hand. He throws a nice high ball, too, yeah. for the most part, mm -hmm. where it lets receivers see it and gauge it and let them run lets under play it. center field. And yeah. that's, that's really big. Um, Another question I had. Sure. And this is getting beyond that one play. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you, you have more you want no, to say. No, I mean, I, I mean, if you want to you go, let's keep just, if you want to ask me more questions about it, go ahead. I know we're not numbers focused here. We've yeah. got more opinions and all that. Mm -hmm. But the numbers that Darnold put up, as opposed to the quarterbacks before him, startling. Yes. How much different. Made me wonder, Adam Gase call a different game? Or did he call the same game with a better quarterback making, making better reads and better throws? He called a different game. But because he could, because of the quarterback who could make better throws and was more talented and gave him the comp. You know, Luke Falk, again, did his best to his mm -hmm. ability. But Luke Falk is just, he's limited in his ability. Right. To where you couldn't even call that play with Luke Falk because he's just not going to be able to launch it out there and put it out there enough. You know, he's got to put it like his elbow grease in it and like give it the steroid jerk and like, Ugh! I got to get it there, and it probably would have still been behind a guy like Robbie Anderson. But, but what a great quarterback does, and this is why people are crazy when they think talent or arm strength doesn't matter and things like that, it gives not only the players confidence and changes your whole perception of the team, but it gives the offensive coordinator the confidence to go, ooh, I can dial up these plays, and my, my quarterback, it's not going to get wasted. Right. I'm not going to be in second right. and ten. Like he's going to make it happen, and we'll get a first down or a touchdown. And I think that really was the big difference. Um, but Dallas is disappointing. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence is disappointing, okay, on that side of the ball. If we just had to get into it real quick. You had a, it, almost a paragraph on, on him. Yeah. They, I mean, you know, you, if you want to be the highest paid defense end in football, and again, I was, I was all for it and sticking mm -hmm. up for you. But I'm going to keep it real. And now that I've stuck up for you and you've got it, you got to play. I'm not saying you got to be the best guy on the field every week, but he, there, there's just too many moments in the game where he doesn't show up. He's not around. He's not there. Where are you? Again, if you told me Robert Quinn was the guy who was the highest paid defensive player in football, I would go, oh, I, I get that. Okay, look at him. But so right now, that's very disappointing for Demarcus Lawrence, which is mm -hmm. big to their team. And it's, you know, Jerry Jones paid him. But of course, when your money is not performing, that is going to hurt your team. And he is hurting their team, okay? And then just to stay on the defensive side, too, the Cowboys just got to do more. That's, that's the bottom line. They're not going to – if they get to the Super Bowl, if they play the New England Patriots like this, Tom Brady is going to go 38 for 40 and 450 yards. And I don't care how talented your defense is. Mm -hmm. They're going to carve it apart. McDaniels and Belichick for two weeks getting that. Are you kidding me? I mean, Kyle Shanahan, if they have to play them in the NFC Championship game or a divisional playoff game, I mean, he's going to shred that defense. You want to see him be more aggressive with the man and the blitz or more creative? More creative, and with disguise. And just, yes, it doesn't have to be like they, – they have enough talent where they don't need to – reinvent the defensive world here. They mm -hmm. just need a few little wrinkles to give them a little advantage every now and then and make the quarterback think a little. Yeah, make Their talent wonder is good. They just need a little bit more schematics to help it out. Right. You know, their adjustments at halftime can't be play harder, right. hit harder. I mean, that's what they did. Yeah. They, they came out in the second half. I was like, oh, I wonder if Dallas will change anything. No, it was just harder. Okay, that's great. I mean, the Jets are playing harder, too. Yeah. So what's that going to do for you? And that right. just annoys me. If okay? they would have said it into this mic that's on, though, maybe. <laughs> it would have been louder. It, it Hello, helped. harder. Uh, so <laughs> that, um, you want to hit the Cowboys offense real quick yes. or anything? I, I, um, I want to go part two. Yeah, just go part two real quick and we'll move on. The Cowboys defense. I'm sorry, yeah. Cowboys offense. Oh, yeah, sorry. Cowboys, Cowboys offense. offense, yes. So let's set the table here. Okay. Two-point conversion. Yep. End of the game. Yep. They bring six. Yep. Cowboys block with five. Yes. Your read from there. My read from there is, one, um, you're playing Greg Williams. Mm -hmm. He's world famous for being a blitzer. Yep. Whenever his back's against the wall, whenever it's a big play, Greg Williams is a blitzer. I got to play him a bunch as a quarterback. I mean, that's what we prepared for uh, with John Gruden. It was, gosh, damn, we got to play Greg Williams, and we got to worry about every blitz underneath the sun mm -hmm. and prepare for it because you don't know which one's going to show up. So – now, you get into this play, two-point conversion. Okay, it's, it's three receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Ezekiel Elliott's in the backfield. He motions him out to the slot. Right. 
So now you got three to the right, two to the left. Which, in addition to the tendencies, is the final give that they are playing. They are man, playing man to man. The backer walks out. Exactly with. right. Yeah. Exactly right. Thank you for saying that. That's exactly right. Now there's a free safety in the middle of the field, so you're thinking, ooh, it's just straight man to man at first. Mm -hmm. Now this is where I would have liked to have seen in a situation like this, especially after he sends him out in motion. Okay, there is 18 seconds left in the play clock. I'm I'm trying to pay attention to all this. I would have liked to have seen a dummy snap count for one, okay? Because they're just giving you one more clue to go, ooh, is anybody going to move here? Are they trying to, you know, screw me over? Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't do that. He motioned them out, and he thought, okay, we're good. Blue 25, set hut. You know, Tom Brady and some of those, they would have got Aaron Rodgers and gone, blue 25, blue 25, set hut, hut, hut. He not only didn't right. do that, he, right. he hardly got the back set. No, he barely he got barely set. It was borderline, set. yes, so he, whether it would have... Uh, he didn't even take the extra couple seconds to... No, because he saw the man, he just said, yeah. oh, it's man-to-man, -man. Right. here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we go from there. Now, added to the coverage of man-to-man, -man, we got five on five up front. Yep. They, put a, they played the bare front, and I'm pretty sure the Cowboys, what we would call in the NFL, made a 5-0 call. They wanted their five guys to block the big five guys, so that's the good. But Jalen Ramsey, who's lined up over Jason, not Jalen Ramsey, the, the Jamal, Adams. Jamal Adams, thank you. He's lined up over Jason Witten as Ezekiel Elliott goes into motion and starts to get set. Like you said, he starts to cheat off of Jason Witten over the tight end and starts to cheat towards the center. And that, that gap between the guard and the center, like, oh, he might become. And then that, that free safety we talked to was in the middle of the field. He is now cheated over to right. the tight end. Now, that's where I say the dummy snap count of Brady or Rodgers, they would have done that. And they would have gone, oh, okay, hold on. Let me change the protection here. Right, we can't go that 5-0 yeah. like we just talked about. Yeah. Maybe we have to slide everybody and just leave one guy on the edge where I'll take care of him, but it gives me a little extra time. Instead, they stay in that 5-0, that and now – Jamal Adams gets to fly between the gap of the center and the guard, and nobody touches him. Right. And, of course, Dak Prescott has no time to do anything, let alone they don't really have See, a hot I, route or a place for him to throw the ball. I think he did have time if one of those inside receivers, because yes. it's difficult to make it outside and make a read when you're under that much yes. pressure. But Jason Witten and Zeke Elliott, those guys are right in front of you. Yes. There was a split second if either one of them had made any kind of move at all to potentially be open. So my problem isn't – I think they conceded that they were going to bring more than they could block. They had to know Greg Williams was going to blitz, just like you said. It's I, I don't right? think they know. I don't think really? they – I know. So but, yeah, really. In my version of the play. Yes. <laughs> yeah, go version, ahead, because you would like to think that's what they thought. In my version of what happened yes. 72 hours later, yes. I think they knew we're going to walk him up. We're going to, we're going to bump out the running back. We're willing to give you the extra rusher. Because we have Jason Witten, we have Zeke Elliott. Sure. And someone's going to win in a half a second, and we can get rid of it before. I, the, both of those guys ran thank three you. yard stock. Well, routes. see, that's the next context clue to tell me you're wrong. That's right. If they really thought he was in a blitz, then they wouldn't have had a guy, th hey, hey, go into the end zone and turn around. That's all they did. That's all they did. So the three guys on the inside, Witten, Ezekiel Elliott, and I can't remember the slot receiver to the right, they went into the end zone and turned around. The two guys on the outside, number four eligible and number five eligible, just ran straight. They were fades. If Elliott runs out with any kind of urgency with a two-way break and goes one way or the other. It's a touchdown. Dak does have time to get it to him. He would have. You're right. But I think he knows, oh, gosh, they've blitzed. They've gotten on me, mm -hmm. and I'm stuck in a spot because I don't really have a route that's really conducive to beating this right here. No. So now he's backpedaling, and he's going, okay, well, what do I do here? And he's going, all right, let me throw to my big or tight end over yeah. the middle, and maybe he can just box it out and make a play here. Yeah. And that's what it was. And that's frustrating, too. I mean, you know, some of these coordinators, you're getting paid a million dollars. What are we doing all week that that's the play we came up with on the yeah. biggest play of the season for your team? Yeah. You know, and again, I've praised Kellen Moore yeah. a lot through five we weeks, yeah. so I'm allowed to bag on him for a, a stupid moment, and that was not being prepared or the right play for that situation. And that's that for that play. Right. I, just, I have written down, if you're going to let six rush against five, you got to have a quick winning route. Yeah, exactly. Inside. you got to have something that, there, that, right, that, that wins a hot route, whatever it may be, and they did not have that. Right. Just the last thing I'll say about this. The players on the offensive side of the ball, though, let the Cowboys down. Where I said the defense, it was the coaches, right? You're talking about on that player? On, on the whole game. Okay. On the, the whole game for the rest of the game with the Cowboys, the players let them down. The plan wasn't, like, the best plan I've seen all year from Kellen Moore, mm -hmm. but it was good enough. It was drop passes. It was errant throws. It was penalties. It was – You see anything different from Dak? Uh, Dak, 
I feel like just a little bit the last few weeks has reverted a little to his old throwing motion with that lockout front leg and coming up over the top real kind of jerky. And I think that's what I saw in some of the throws where Affecting we're accuracy. a little aerial. Yeah, it affects accuracy yeah. a little bit. And the biggest thing to me overall, we talked about your money needs to perform, Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott had a few runs in the first half. And again, I, Ezekiel is a hell of a player, and I banged on the table for him to be the highest paid running back in yep. football. But you're the highest paid running back in football now. And I'm not saying you've got to be the best guy in the league right now. But you're right, right now, I would say he's not top five. I just can't, I can't do it. When I watched the film and a few runs early on in the first quarter, I wrote down, and I think you got my notes, I wrote down, if this is McCaffrey, Cook, um, right. Fournette, Nick Chubb, even a healthy Marlon Mack, they're going to the house. This is like, these are house calls. It's him one-on-one -on -one with a guy. Or, mm -hmm. like, if you just stay in this little lane here, you know, you're going to run for another 30 yards. But he knows he has lost the gear, and he's looking to cut back a lot. And that's always a sign for a guy lost that's looking. Lost the gear or doesn't, doesn't have it yet because. Maybe he, that, too. I'm hoping that's what it is. But you see, he, for whatever the reason is, he doesn't have it right now. No, he does yeah. not. And I would like to see the guy that I saw in year one and year two where when he caught a screen pass, you, might, oh, you better yeah. watch out because he can go 80 against the Pittsburgh Steelers who had tremendous speed on their team at that right? time. Or, yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of plays like that. He was one of those players. And it's not just that he was, um, I mean, physically he had a great ability and still does right. to fall forward and pick up an extra couple. Yeah. But in a league full of guys who are super fast, and it all kind of looks the same sometimes. Yeah. He was somebody, if you were there live in person on Sunday. You went, ooh, it that's special. Different. It was, yes, uh, without a doubt. I know. And there's Often. still some special things yeah. about him. He's physical and, and everything like that. I hope it does. Uh, either way, he needs to run some sprints and get better at that. Yeah. He, he does. Because he's got to be a game breaker for that team to be good. Again, they paid him the money. The offensive line, the money. And when they don't dominate the game and make some of the plays that are there to be had, you know, it's good. I know the stat line looks pretty good. But again, it's right? what's there to be had and yeah. what you took advantage of is really the matter at hand. All right, we got to call my dad. All right. How about Peter King podcast? Well, we'll talk about that after my okay. dad. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we went too long, and I don't want to make my father <laughs> any more angry because I know he's going, he's what the pissed. hell? You told me 2.30, and yeah. then you told me 2.35, and now it's 2.58. Sorry, you know, it's really a bad, really bad part. It's a really bad imitation of me. <laughs> and right? yeah. when I do this podcast, I'm yeah. never worried about the time you call. I always expect you to be late because okay, you both good. are, you know, you're windbag, so you take forever. <laughs> and I'm sitting here, you know, watching games, so I don't care. So you interrupted me. I need a break anyway. Okay, good. All he right. didn't call us dummies in his first hello like he has before. He so has, that, yes. that was nice, Phil. Thank what you. was that? You didn't call us dummies this time. Did I I'll call y'all dummies before? Yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. you know, I call everybody so many things. I can't keep up with it. Um, all right, so, so I what's told, going on? I, well, I oh, already yeah. told everybody that we talked on the phone before, and I just... Yeah, we talked for 30 seconds. Yes. That was great for you to give me that time in your busy schedule. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank Once you. a week, Thank you know, it's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And I told you, I, I like it the best when you just kind of look at the league and you go with the things that jump out to you right now. Yeah. I think that's... I like the Phil Sims riff session. The opening oh, statement man. by Phil. Right. We can play man. off it from there. So, like, week six... NFL season. Go ahead. Just give me a thought, too. What, what, what is well, like my first thought is, yes. you know, the, the game we watched, Green Bay, Detroit, really right. interesting. Uh, I think everything that I thought about Detroit is coming true. I saw it coming true late last year. Nobody paid attention, of course. <laughs> but you could see they were getting organized. He was getting the plan, the culture. Man, we use that word a lot, the culture. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, it's real. It's true. So that's why I don't mind using a phrase that everybody else does. But we, Matt Patricia, very disciplined on the defensive side. Uh, they're getting tough. And you, I've heard you say and Paul talk about Matt Stafford. Hey, he's, he's really buying in, doing the right things. Yep. One quick thought about their offense. Yeah. It ran out of plays. I think you told me that, which is true. Right. Or maybe it was my son who was watching was, the game with I think me. it was your son watching the game with you because yeah. I didn't say that to you. Yeah. yeah, he goes, well, they've already gone through their, 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 yes. all their plays. they got nothing left. Now yeah. it's just who can make a play. Right. And I thought that was interesting, and I know it to be That's true, That's what it looked too. like. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Then the other one was, is I watched the game today, uh, you know, all the plays and everything under very, very close. And I went back. It's funny. I did Green Bay like this. I watched two games of theirs. I watched all the Dallas game, then I watched the Detroit game, and yeah. I just go, what a difference. It is, you know, we jump to conclusions too quick always. 
uh, about you know after one or two games, we think we got the season figured out. But Green Bay is really versatile in what they're doing on the offensive side, right? And it is it's it's great. Matt Lafleur, you know his plays. I see all those. They got those, and you can do more than Sean McVay can do with the offense. Yes, because he's got Aaron Rodgers. Yes, and the offensive line is solid. And then you see. All of Aaron Rodgers' little favorite plays in there, too. So it's a really good mixture. It is. It's mostly Matt LaFleur. The running game is real. Yep. And once the, I think the Green Bay offensive line really gets the hang of the run game yeah. and how to do the play action game with it, that it's going to be tremendous. And of course, it would help if they could keep a receiver on the field for more than one game. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But, but it, it really is interesting. The. Aaron Rodgers has got to be happy about what they do on the offensive side. He made a lot of faces to that sideline during the game, didn't he? he yeah. Yes, he did. But not, yeah, as, not like, as usual, but yes, he did. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot. And, and, it, it's, and I know what it is. It, and, you know, Aaron Rodgers has been in the league, I don't know how many years, a lot. But he has to look down at that, you know, flip his card open and call the plays. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of information coming through that helmet. I'm sure he's going, hey, enough. Huh. I don't need more alerts and this and kills and whatever. Right. But just really, first, really impressed with their offense. And then Detroit, just all their adjustments, how smart they are now on the defensive side. Yes. The Green Bay ran clever plays to tell the audience. Yeah. That I go, wow, that's great. That's great. Right. Oh, my God, Detroit covered it. Right. And so that, that so we know Matt Patricia. Just wasn't standing there listening to Bill Belichick all those years up there. He was he was in on the planning and how to uh, coach defenses and it, 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 that part. That's that's my first thing of the day. Yeah, well, what's your, I, I, that's a good one. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's your, what, what's your favorite way that the Green Bay offense has shifted or deviated or changed, improved? Yeah. From what well, you it's, saw it's last just year. this. It's it's two commitment to the running game, getting underneath center. So there's a lot of deception. True play action passes. I think yes. uh, in all the years I watched them before, they really had like one play action pass. He faked it, rolled right, yep. and waited for a deep post yep. down the field. That was the only one I ever saw. Uh, more personnel, double tight ends, doing different things, all that. And a lot, a lot of different route combinations off the play oh, action. Every listen, week it's more and more. The, yes. The route combinations are doing things I've never seen them do. And more, much more movement to the offense, yes. which has really helped them. And, I, I'm, I did all this because I'm going to talk about it on the show, I hope, on Sunday if we get to it. But just how their movement and some of the things they're doing are really slowing and deceiving the defense. And that's, Paul, that's the idea of the quarterback, I mean right. the offense. You want to deceive. You want to make them think and then do something to make them hesitate. And Green Bay's did a great job. They're doing a, they're doing a really good job that way. Yeah, yeah. they really are. Like, you're, uh, so I know we haven't even talked about this, but – I mean, you think Green Bay's for real, right? Like, like if they, well, like yes. how for real do you think Green Bay is? Would you be shocked if Green Bay ended up in the Super Bowl in the NFC right now? No, I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, but I, you know, listen, do I think they're big enough and uh, do they have the size, speed thing that I'd like to see? And then the answer is no. I, I don't think they do. That yeah. worries me about yes. them. Is there a team and, you like better in the NFC? Well, you know, I look at San Francisco and just go, man, you know, I, I watched that game against L.A. Now, you know, they it was like looking in the mirror, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> they're both running the same kind of stuff. I think San Francisco just has more plays than than the Rams do right. to go to. Right. And, and, the, and San Francisco is just big and fast and kind of ferocious right now. Ferocious. So I'm not going to, like, go over the top yet, but I'm getting close. Yeah, right. And, you know, the fact that they can just line up and you know they're going to run it, and they run it. They ran it, I think, 40-some times against the Rams. Now, that a lot of that has to do with the fact, too, the Rams just were not doing a lot on the offensive side, too. Yep. But, yeah, the, the, the NFC, yeah, it's, go, all right, so wait. it's loaded. Yeah, it's loaded. But Green Bay, they got a lot of good parts. They can cover, and they got a good offensive line. They got a really well-designed offense and defense, all that. And, of course, we know they got the guy. They got the guy. Okay, yeah. the last one, just because I just thought of this. All right, so if you had to rank the Niners, the Packers, the Saints, and the Seahawks, mm. how, would you, how would you put that? You, Niners are one, obviously. 
Now, not obviously. Okay, but all right. But just, I put them there, yeah, yes. And then yeah. I'm I'm am putting the Saints without even thinking second before okay. I even think about anybody else. Okay. Just because yeah. who in the hell's tougher than they are? Yes. Mm. Right. I mean, they just might as well go out in the street and let's go take off our helmets. Let's just fight. <laughs> yeah, that, they that, are. That, that's really what they are. Sean yeah. Payton is just like John Gruden. I think <laughs> Gruden, what he's doing in Oakland. It's not even it, – they are managing football games from start to finish as well as anybody. Yes. And it is so controlled, running it, all this we know. The passing game is – it's not safe, man. It's super safe. Right. And it is just – they're just going to – what what is it? What do you call slow torture? You know, they just they just slowly yes. they cut you here, cut you there, right. and all of a sudden you bleed to death. That's yep. what they're doing. Okay, the so Niners, Saints, right. who else? Uh, the the uh, Seahawks. Seahawks. And yep, Seahawks and Packers. Whoa. Yeah, that's a tough one between that one and there. I, I'm going Packers. Okay. I, I just, I, you know, I know the Seahawks. I just got to see more. You know, their defense has got to kind of get it together. Yep. They got past defense is a concern with them. Yeah, it's a big concern, and, and you know that's a big deal and all in all in NFL right now. Um, and so Seattle, and I'm missing the, line, the fifth one is who? Well, no, I just I just said those four. Those were the you, four. You oh, you did. Okay, you yeah. Did yeah. I feel really good. I don't even hesitate to name those four. It, it's close with three and four, yeah. but one and two have kind of separated themselves in my mind, just because they can win a lot of ways. Yeah, it, I hear you. Yeah, so how would that's you rank the cool. four, Chris? Oh, my ranking. Um, I think I would do. I would. I think the Niners are number one. Mm -hmm. I think I'm with Dad. I think I would do the same exact way, actually. I would give the green. I would go Niners one, Saints two. I would go Green Bay three. Sl yeah, slightly over Seattle. I mean, I know it's almost a coin t coin flip game to me, but I guess what I would say more than anything is I do like Green Bay's offense more than I like Seattle's offense. I think Green Bay would probably come up with a stop or two more than Seattle would be able to. At least that would be my assessment right now. It's a hell of a compliment on the NFC, Phil, that, that Seattle, with the way Russell Wilson is playing, I know. is the fourth best team in that country. The NFC is stacked. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, that, that's right. And, you know, listen, Russell Wilson, they're doing a lot of – they're overcoming their defense. And Russell Wilson, you know, the wild card, it, it's not even close. The wild card is his off-schedule plays. I yeah. mean, it's mm – -hmm. Look, you go, oh, what a good day by their offense and all that. Then you watch the game, you go, well, if he didn't do that, if he didn't move six times right. and make these plays, then what do they got? They got a lot of – they lose. Right. And, and, you know, think about this. Think about the Detroit Lions, well, how they lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes. That way, think about the game where they – to say they blew it against the Cardinals and the Tides, an yes. understatement. Yes. And then the other game, I mean, they could be sitting there and we'd be going, man, the Detroit Lions, they're real. They could. Mm -hmm. So there are just so many teams, and Detroit's fighting <laughs> the whole division. Yeah. I mean, you know, Minnesota's getting it straight, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and now and then we're leaving out Philadelphia, Dallas. I mean, it just it gets. Yeah, it's the amazing. Rams. Oh, Carolina, Carolina. the Rams. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. Good luck in the NFC. Yeah, it is. I mean, there's a team that could literally be in the Super Bowl who doesn't get in the playoffs in the NFC. That's, that's right. how good it is. Yeah. All yeah. right, my last two rips real quick. Yeah, go Sam ahead. Sam Darnold, to yep. think his feet, his feet were the difference in the game. I like that. And you I go, just well, he didn't it. run. Yeah. Right. But his quick little movement with his feet yep. hesitated the defensive lineman yep. and he made throws down the field they did stopped. you guys see but, that out of college did you see that at USC? yeah 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 that's the only way he played at usc yeah he played and you know we all kind of i listen i was critical of it like sit your damn feet and throw the ball right yeah. but his like he twitches and he's gonna and then he resets and it truly i saw the cowboys three times look like they might have a pass rush and all of them stopped because they thought he was going to break the pocket yeah and he got completions on all three of them. Think of that long touchdown pass to Robbie Anderson. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the way he kind of like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. His yeah. movement is jerky. I think it, you know, it makes guys stops, stop, and does he's it done it for so long. Anybody, That's though? who he is. Does, does it remind you of anybody going back the last 40 years who, who kind of moves that way in the pocket? Man, you know. Paul, I can't think of anybody. It if, looks it, it looks different. I mean, everybody wants to move and make yeah. guys miss within the little one yard radius there, but it just I don't know. He's he it is I mean, he's um the guy I always thought he reminded me of. Now the throwing motion is not exactly yeah. the same, but it's like a, a little Tony Romo ish. Okay. Uh, that would be good. Tony know, was much more more smooth and maybe controlled yeah. and not as jerky, but 
Steve Young used to step up and kind of like, I mean, obviously sure, he's lefty. He looked to run a little bit more. He could run more. better, but yes. just like when he would make guys miss in the pocket yeah. at the top of his drop, yes. would kind of do that a lot yes. as well. I don't know if it's as quick-footed as Sam no. Darnold. Dan, Sam's no, like Darnold's that saying, it can, yeah, it's really like, look at him. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. It's, look it's at, pretty look impressive. Look at his body. He's got that big old set of legs and butt. Yeah, and he's got. It looks like he's got little tiny feet. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. You know, and that so that really does. And Darnold can throw from. He can rip his arm in about eight thousand yeah, different ways. He can, right. which at times is going to worry me, because his kind of motion. I thought mm-hmm. there was times last year. I thought his arm in certain games. I go, wow, well, definitely not Chris. Yes. And you know, long yeah. motions do wear out over right. the course of a year, and that'll be interesting to see. And my last one is yeah. the Cardinals. I know they played the Bengals and the Atlanta Falcons. Right. I don't care. They're doing the same thing. Your buddy Cliff Kingsbury, yeah. Christopher, that you played against, yeah. is starting to go, oh, you know what? I think I'll copy a few of these NFL plays. He definitely yeah. is. And, oh, t- Kyler Murray's under center. Right. Yes. Oh, here comes the blitz. We can finally pick one up. Right. And, and, and their assault of screens, picks, and all that is so much that – they don't care. They lose a yard. They throw another with the next play and gain four, and it's third and whatever. Right, and yeah. I think Colin Murray's really kind of gotten into a groove of movement in the pocket and what he wants to do, and he's becoming much more effective that way. Definitely. You know, he's not escaping and just running to the sideline. Right, he's going up in the pocket. He's pressuring the line of scrimmage, or then he makes a throw that way, or he tucks it and runs up the middle, like we saw against Cincinnati, where he ripped off like a 30-yard run in a crucial part of the game. Well, he ripped off a few against the uh, Atlanta too, and also, look, he does have a good arm. Yes, and he does. It, it is truly the quickest snap in the NFL. It's, yep. it's the quickest in the, you know, got to have a quick release. And, and I, well, he's got one. He's yes. very quick with the football. <laughs> throws great spirals. I, I think when he played Cincinnati, I was watching that game, and I went, "Wow, that's the first time I've seen the first two plays of the game." I think he threw some wobblers. I was like, "Oh, right. Do we got something here? Can he throw outside in this kind of weather?" And then the rest of the game, he striped it. So that was the end of that little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah, right. So all right, that was a good. Hey, Dad. Dad. Hey, what? That was good shit. Hey, well man, done. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the check, Paul. When's the check coming? <laughs> well, yeah, keep waiting, okay? You know, I, hey, listen. Yeah, it's, listen in the, it's, it's in the mail. We put it in just normal, generic well, mail. So it might take up, a while. Though. When you drive well, up, you know what happens? Person. Your kids grow up, and you know yeah. what you find out? You just work for free. Right? <laughs> you know, it's it. So I'm used to it. It's okay. It's okay, son. All, All right. right. Just, All don't, right. Don't worry. I don't feel guilty. See ya. <laughs> okay. See you, Paul. See you, Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Funny. Uh, we work for free anyway. Uh, yes. The kids aren't even grown up. I, we might get them in here next week. So we there's should. a chance that can That'd happen. We're trying to work that out. T- two thoughts there. Yeah. Are the uh, One through four in the NFC. Right. Niners, Saints, Packers, Seahawks. Yeah. What a compliment to New Orleans. They could be number two with their backup quarterback. I know. What if Russell Wilson wasn't playing? I, oh, what I, if Aaron, I mean, I know those teams wouldn't be on. They're, that they're list. different, right? And number two, Sam Darnold with those feet, and this yeah. is getting on a soapbox. Yeah, that's all right. Multi-sport athlete. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, I hear you. You know what I'm I saying? Know. Basketball player. Yeah, knows how to play defense. Big volleyball family. Exactly. So you know right. he was doing that growing up. So. Definitely, he's an athlete. Yeah, he really is. There's no question about it, and he's natural athlete. It's not yeah. like oh, I've only played quarterback my Didn't whole peak life. At age 14, exactly. Been a million seven on seven. Right, games. right. A hundred percent. Yeah, he's has hasn't peaked yet, and he's right. still working to be more of a quarterback, and it's still good enough as it right. is right now. So uh, I, your point's very valid there. We can get back to the NFL. Yeah, no, that's yeah. cool. I'm, I, you know, I throw shit like that in, you f- Okay, I like that. <laughs> All right. All right, Peter King Podcast. Yes. Okay, I just want to tell everybody about that. Always worth the listen. You know Peter's the man. Uh, his Football Morning in America art, uh, you know, article, everything you see on NBCSports.com is phenomenal, and he always does a short podcast off of it which is really good to not kind of paraphrasing it, making it short. And then he dives in and always has great guests. I mean, come on. Well, you know, I say this every week. Peter's the godfather of NFL right. sports writing, and he's a pretty witty, funny guy when you listen to him, too. I hope he's not burping too much into the mic during his podcast and things like that, which is like, I really enjoy it. Right. Uh, yeah, his, his little quirky quirkiness to him. But the Peter, Peter King podcast, come on. If you want to stay in tune with the NFL, Always worth the listen. Peter is all over everything. I have fan moments like when I'm around Peter. It's yeah. like, boy, this is really cool. Like I'm, I'm friends with Peter King. Like he, he was that big growing up. 
Like you would read his his lead articles in Sports Illustrated. Oh, I know. I mean, yeah, I, right? I, I grew up with it. Yeah, yeah me like, too. Yeah, let me see what Peter King wrote in here every week. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and I knew Peter from when I was a very young boy, uh, really, because I he came to my house when I was he's like. Got, he's got great stories about your dad. Yes, yeah. I think the first he'll, story he'll tell you the first time he ever met me, I was kicking mulch into the my pool in the backyard, <laughs> and my dad was in the kitchen being interviewed by Peter and saw me doing it, and he's like, "Hold on, hold on, Peter," yeah. and he was like, "Hey, Christopher, stop." <laughs> you know, one of those. He probably didn't swear at that point, but right. maybe did. Called you Christopher. Sure. That's when you know you're in yes. trouble. Yes. All right. So here we go. We got uh, play number three of what the f happened. Yes. Okay. And we are going into Cleveland's offense. All right. And we're going to do two plays for this game. But part one will be the Baker Mayfield red zone interception. Okay. Yes. Towards the end of the first half. Right. Um, you remember the play a little bit there? I've got my interpretation of it. Okay, you do? Yeah. Yeah, I, well, then let, let's, uh, I'd like to hear your. Reverse the role here a yeah, little bit? Yeah, let's go. I'd like to hear your interpretation of it. Okay, you can tell me tell me what I got right and what I got wrong. I will. If you I can, got anything I right. I promise you. You can I act will. like you maybe act like a couple <laughs> Yeah. Okay, second down eight, buck 36 left, first half. Browns up 20 12. Yep. They're on their plus 10. Yep. Very important here. He throws a, a, a wasn't like a three. Yard quick slant. Like no, five it was or a six five, yard was quick a, slant. Yeah, it's like a, it's a it's either a pop route or a glance. Uh, right. Either way. However, it, it only yes. works right. if it syncs up with a three step drop. Sure. For some reason, he took a five step drop. Right. This was the personification of you hear all the time. All the windows get smaller. Yes. In the red zone. Well, one example is you got to go three steps instead of five on the short route tree stuff. Yes. And he went five steps. By the time he got to five, it was half a second too late. If he throws that off three yep. accurately, it's a touchdown. Yes. He threw it late, he threw it high, and it was picked. Okay, I'll agree with you on most things you said, mm -hmm. right? All right, and I, I'm not trying to be a jerk here. No, I mean, we're be. buddies, okay? Yeah, All right, yeah. so, I mean, uh, yeah, the his feet are definitely off yep. on the throw, definitely. Now, there's a little token play action fake, which tells me he's supposed to take the five-step drop, but okay? But you can take three steps you could. on a play you action. Could. Teams do it. You definitely could. No doubt about it. Especially you could have just got a zone. bam, one, two, three, and come up. Like, Brady and New England do it all the time. Yeah. So, there's, there's a few things at play here. Now, he's got basically the same route on both sides. Mm -hmm. Jarvis is running it to the front side, who he ends up throwing to Jarvis. And on the back side is Odell Beckham Jr. Yep. Now, there's four down linemen. There's a linebacker weak, okay, who drops out. He's on the line of scrimmage and drops out. I'm watching this play as I talk to you. Now You're, you're cheating. I am cheating. Maybe. Well, I've written it, but here you go. All right. All right, so he's doing that as he's dropping back. But you can see a little token fake. Five steps, takes a little bit of a weird, instead of maybe just sticking his foot in the ground, he takes a little bit of a hop, hitch, skip, skip there at the end, mm -hmm. which I think is one, that's really what affected the timing more than anything. I think if he just puts his foot in the ground and goes, bam, five, it happens like you said, where now it's just, boom, I can yeah, do it. Was, almost it like a three five step. with a hitch. With a hitch, which is too much. It doesn't exist down there. No, it doesn't, it does not. It's very rare, mm -hmm. certainly. It definitely is. Now, the other thing I'll say to this too, there's a few things at play here in my, my, my opinion. One, the throw's off target, obviously. I mean, yeah. he throws the ball, and it's a good two to three feet behind Jarvis Landry, yep. who slows down and tries to stick an arm out to get it, and it gets intercepted. Um, two, as we go through this, now you're looking at this play. You know, there's, we talked about the weak side linebacker on the line of scrimmage. There's two other linebackers. One is right over the middle of them. The other one is right over the tight end. Mm -hmm. And there's a safety kicked over to Jarvis Landry, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, a strong safety down there. So right off from that look, I would go pre-snap. Should be looking the other way. I would look the other way. Yeah. Now, the free safety in the middle of the field is a little cheated towards Odell Beckham Jr. But he's, he's not looking at Odell. He's looking at, he's, like he's eyeing up the back of the tight end. He, yes, he is. Exactly right. See, he's scaring you. And thank you for saying that because you're exactly right. He's trying to scare Baker or any quarterback with his body presence just a little bit. But you got to pay attention to more than body presence yeah. as a quarterback. Right. Like, John Gruden used to say, where's his bright lights at? Where's his bright lights mm -hmm. at? Yeah, and you're right. His bright lights are looking across. So he's trying to scare him with like, hey, I'm a little closer to Odell's side. Right. But his body intentions and lang body he's language, not selling it. he could care less. Yeah, right. He does even, not care. Didn't look at him once. Now, this is something that's gone on with Baker to me a little bit all year. Not one, has he been a little inaccurate to Odell Beckham Jr.? Definitely. And I have my theory a little bit. One is 
you know, I don't know if you ever had this, but when I like the first few times I had to throw to Joey Galloway or Keyshawn Johnson, yeah. I wanted to throw it so perfect to them because, yeah, yeah. oh, please like me. Right. I want you to like me. You're so good, and I want you to think I'm good too. <laughs> please. Right. And I feel that way in this show every yeah, time. <laughs> okay, good. I have that effect on you, eh? Uh, but it, that is a real thing. Uh, as far as a quarterback is concerned, still has it? I, I, I feel like it still hasn't become comfortable to him. Mm. I think between some of the throws I saw him miss in this game, yeah. the throws I saw on Monday night last week, where he's wide open. And I just go, man, Baker Mayfield stripes that in there against anybody. I think he sees it and he's like, oh gosh, it's Odell. I want to throw it so perfect and good so we can be buddies after the game and hang out and go, look at all the connections <laughs> we had today. Okay, I don't know that, but that's just my theory. Fair point. All right, now, back to the play. There's Again, you talked about the safety's bright lights, right? Yeah. And Bobby Wagner's bright lights, who's the linebacker right over the center of the ball, he's towards the strong side, too, where the tight end is Jarvis Landry is. The window to the back side to Odell Beckham Jr. is clearly bigger than the window to this side where we have K.J. Wright and another guy that's right over here that's just outside of the screen from the behind the scrimmage yeah. angle we're looking at right now. Now, the big thing is, and this has come up a little bit with Baker, I think, a few times during the year already. I've seen it every week. I've watched every Brown snap the whole season. I haven't missed one on film. He, I think, sometimes predetermines, because Odell has gotten a lot of double teams and things like that. But there's been a few plays in every game where I think he goes, they're not going to let Odell catch the ball here. And that's one of them. I, without a doubt. Yeah, he didn't with, even look He predetermined. Yeah. He goes, they're going to double Odell. They're not going to let me throw to him. And that's where you just can't fall into that trap as a quarterback. You know, if Tom Brady did that every time he had Gronkowski split out in a big moment, gosh, then he would have missed a lot of plays. Right. In fact, he went the opposite way sometimes. He went, oh, you're doubling him? Oh, I don't give a shit. It's Gronkowski. I'm still going to throw it to him. Right. He had a number of plays like that. He, he bordered too much on the other side. And sometimes that's why Rob Gronkowski got hurt a few times because Brady was just like, ah, I don't care. It's Gronk. I'm going to throw it in there, and he'll catch it, and somebody will smash him, and he'll get up. Right. Um, so, yes, I think his pre-snap reads off, the throws off, and the five steps with a hitch. And the five steps with a hitch, without a doubt. The little funky hitch there definitely throw it, threw it off altogether. And that was a huge part of the football game, not only because they could have settled for a field goal, but he could have thrown a touchdown to Odell Beckham Jr. Right. He really could have put Seattle in a big bind. And, you know, that was huge. Now, that's that play. That's that play. Yeah. We have two parts. We got two parts the, of this. The Browns one. offense qualified twice. Well, could they qualified twice? Because a lot yeah. of people I know on social media, there's this big thing out there about the fourth and one, right? Yep, and that's our second yes. play. Yeah. Yep. So let's uh, – you want to set the stage there? The, the first part of it was so like so odd with yeah. the the play stops. They kind of ran it. Right, didn't. because Jarvis Landry had the review. Yeah. Right, of the ball getting over in the end zone. Right. So now they come up to the line of scrimmage, and they're going to run a fourth. They're going for it. Yes. And as they say, said Hut, or getting ready to say, set up, Freddie Kitchens has thrown the challenge flag. Yeah. So they run a play. But they kind of ran the play that looked like it was going to work. He's going to walk in the end zone. Work. He's going to walk in the end zone. Run yes. play off the right side. Right side, right, right. So now they review the play. Okay, now the touchdown. Yep. They line up again for fourth and one once again. Same it's the play. same formation that we saw. Mm -hmm. It is the same play mm -hmm. again. Now, this is what I want to say to everybody, first of all. It's the same play we saw that got stopped that looked like Nick Chubb was going to run in the end zone. One, if you watch the play, uh, uh, the one that worked as they, the challenge flag comes out, mm -hmm. there were certain players on Seattle who stopped playing. They saw that the yeah, flag yeah. was being thrown. Yeah. So you can't look at that play and go, oh, they would have scored. I Damn it, he challenged it, and they would have scored anyways. Yeah. No, it, it wasn't realistic. There was linebackers and people who had saw it, and they stopped playing. Right. So you have to take that into account. Now, two, some people, go ahead, what do you want to say? We haven't talked about this yes. play yet. No, we have I, not. I kind of want to know if, if you're on the same page Without, without either one of us knowing what, what the other think. Right. So write down on, on a piece of paper. Okay. Look at it. Question is, do you have a problem with the play that was called? So I, I have written down. Okay. I have written down what I think. Okay. Can, can you write down there? Yep. Okay. Okay. I'm going to write it right here. I don't, okay. want any, I don't want people to think I was influenced. <laughs> oh, okay. I wrote, go ahead. You can write it. I already okay. wrote no. You wrote no. I wrote no, too. Right. Thank you. Yes. It doesn't matter. Okay. It, there's so there's, there's such a narrative for people to, to latch onto after the fact. It was stupid to run the same play again. Was it really? Was it really stupid to run the same play again? No. Did they tell the defense there? Hey, we're gonna run the same play again. No, right. They just stopped it. Yes. So stop with this, this whole silly post-play narrative, post-game complaints that it was dumb to run it again. If he scored on this play, everyone had gone. 
oh, that was brilliant that he right. called it again. They saw it worked before the, the challenge flag, and he called yeah. it again. Maybe Good it was extra him. smart because they thought they're thinking we're going to run the same play. I, I, I mean – I think, first off, the Seattle Seahawks are not thinking they're going to run the same play. Of course they the don't. The psychology is, oh, gosh, there's no way they'll run the they same play. They won't do that again. Watch out for the I, we, yeah. what's ready for the play action. They're going right. to run the boot off of it now or, or some play action pass. Let's not be too aggressive. Either way, it has nothing to do with, with jack shit here, okay? The, the play happens, and just to explain the play to everybody else, all right, it's, it's, uh, they're going to run the ball to the right. And you got a right guard, a right tackle, and a tight end to the right. And you got an eye formation, full back behind Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb at tailback. All right. They're going to run like tight uh, tackle block down, guard pull. Okay. And the full back is going to lead lead uh, the tailback up into the hole. You're okay. Watching it again, aren't you? I'm watching yeah. it again. So yeah. you can watch it with me. So we'll we can verify and we can see it. Go ahead. And I'm yep. going to show you the back end zone here part. Now, the play is this it's great. I don't know if the play – the play doesn't work, obviously. But the reason the play doesn't work is because of one person, in my opinion. And he wears number 90, and they traded for him from the Houston Texans. And he is – this is why you can't listen to stats, because here's one of the biggest plays of the game. And what did Jadeveon Connie do? He f***ed the play up, okay? Mm -hmm. That's what he did. He's over the tight end who's going to try to block him down, okay? No, you're not. Jeez. No, that's right. So you yeah. see it. He jacks the tight end up. The tight end up is now a yard in the backfield. The guard who we're talking about pulling now can't really pull cleanly or get any speed. He's actually going backwards as he goes around the edge. Now the fullback, his landmark's messed up, so he has nowhere to go. He screwed up three people. He in screwed one up play. three people in one play. Exactly right. And, and now Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb just got the ball, and he's going. Wait, I can't even yeah. go to the hole because Jadeveon Clowney has put the tight end in the hole, and now I have to cut back and try to make something happen. And of course, the pursuit's there by that time. Goes back so, to one of your other points, if you're putting a tight end or a back on the other team. You better be careful yeah. in those situations. Yeah. You better be careful. Now, I'll give these like little two cents about plays like this. Again, I don't have a big issue with what was called here. New England, when I worked there, or yep. played for Josh McDaniels, they had a pretty big rule of, we don't pull linemen on the one yard line. Because they didn't want people like, shooting the gap as your mm -hmm. guard pulled, right? And all of a sudden a linebacker might have hit the blitz right at the right time. Right. And all of a sudden he replaces the guard and he's in your backfield and you got nobody to block him. Sometimes it does cause unwanted foot traffic right there, like we saw too, where people just do jumbled up and everything like that. So they don't mess with that kind of stuff. And then two, you do have to goal line study because you got to make sure, oh wait, we're going to run over this tight end. Can our tight end actually block? This man, I mean, I know on the board we wrote the line and he's blocked, but right. can our tight end actually block the human being of Jadeveon Clowney? Right. And that's where I think the play was messed up in general. They asked their guy to do something that's really not in his wheelhouse against yeah. a guy that was in his wheelhouse. He only had three tackles, no quarterback hits or sacks, so he, he, he didn't have a good game. No, he didn't have a good game. Sucks. He, I know. He's, what were they thinking, trade? Yeah, well, I, right. And uh, he's, he's phenomenal. Yeah. Jadeveon Clowney's phenomenal, and he keeps getting better and better every week. And, yeah, the stats will never tell the whole story on Jadeveon Clowney. He is a game wrecker that way. And uh, I think you're – hey, watch out for Seattle. You know, Dad talked about it a little bit. Their offense is not, like, great, but I do think it's getting a little bit better, like we talked about with you Green have, Bay. Both you and your dad had him as the fourth-best team in the NFC. Yeah, and the NFC stacked. Yeah. The, the, really, the biggest reason I would have them fourth is more because of their defense. Their pass, their pass defense is an issue. And that's why they – I say watch out because they need – Jerron Reed comes back this week, who's one of the best D tackles in football. And Ezekiel Anza and Jadeveon are really still just kind of coming along here. They didn't do anything in training camp. Mm -hmm. So they're really just getting into, like, ultimate season shape right now. And uh, I still think, yeah, they'll get better on that side of the ball. And, of course, Seattle is uh, the real deal. There you go. Yeah. All well, right. we got one more. We do. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think we got two more. We got two more. We got two more. And this one is going to go to... Play number four of a segment we like to call What the F*** Happened, okay? Yes. Now, Minnesota. NFC North. Minnesota, Philadelphia. Um, the big play we are going to talk about is Stefan Diggs' first touchdown. 62-yard reception in the second quarter uh, post route over the top, mm -hmm. right? You saw it. I'm going to pull up the play because I'm enjoying you watching this as I, as I go through it. It's kind of fun. Fun scheme that I'm kind of seeing a lot more now where the, that the slot receiver affects a safety and a corner 
by running this like 18 to 20 yard sail route? It does, well, yeah, well this would be more of a deep cross right deep, here. Okay, right? deep cross. Because it's coming from the other side. Yeah. So, okay, so let's go through the play. Here we go. It's, uh, what do we got? First and 10, 38 yard line on their own 38 yard line. Mm -hmm. Vikings are up 10 to three. There's 12.02 left in the second quarter running clock. Yeah. Okay, now the Vikings have I formation behind them and it's a Thielen in the slot to the right and this is Irv Smith, the tight end, split out all the way wide. And then on the left, he has Stefan Diggs, who is in a little bit of a short split, not too far from the tackle. Right. Now, really, the big thing here is the play they called is nothing special. Every, every high school team uh, has this play in football. The single receiver to the left runs a post. The slot runs the deep cross. And the outside guy over there runs an in cut. They often, though, I'll say it's, yeah. it's different in one slight way. Yep. Is that the inside guy? And it's Thielen in this case. Right. This deep cross or deep sail, a lot of times, is a shorter under route. It could be or definitely the the classic old 12 to 15 yard down and in. Definitely could be. And this deep cross affects a safety and a corner. Whereas those other two routes would not. They you would not. I don't totally get what you're saying. You're, you're exactly right. The other version of it was like what you said is yes, as Thielen would run the shallow cross and this guy still might run the in cut, but this has got a more two vertical presences yes. onto that two receiver side. In a side. diagonal way, he I gets get you. deeper. And we would have called this play in John Gruden's offense like pass 93 Willie Z deep cross, right? And everybody had to know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, so either way, here we go. He runs a little play action fake to the weak side. Fullback goes through. It's Madison at tailback. He's looking for protection, whatever. But the big thing here is the, the point of this, the moral of this play here is sometimes the offensive coordinator calls the exact right play against the exact right, right, right coverage. coverage. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and go, anybody in Philadelphia did anything egregiously wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't look at it like that. They all followed their rules. Right. And what you're saying is the backside safety, Rodney McLeod, he's looking up the other guy on the other side, which is Thielen running the deep cross. And cover four, this is quarters coverage, four guys, quarter, quarter, quarter. They all got that and a quarter. Yeah. They all got a, a quarter of the field. Well, in cover, in cover four, a lot of times that weak side safety is taught to look backside crossers up right. or somebody coming into that area. He's not really responsible for what goes on behind him. And this is a play where the read for Kirk Cousins is the post to the deep cross, to the in cut. And there's a big alert when he gets to the line of scrimmage and he goes, oh my gosh, it's got cover four. You know, Gary Kubiak and Stefanski have been telling me since August 2nd, if we get cover four against this play, <laughs> give the post a time yeah. to get down the field because we should have it. And they had it. Right. And where it's hard for the Eagles is they're not pressuring the passer the way they used to. They're beat up in the secondary, especially at the corner position. And now cover four in this type of play basically becomes man-to-man -man for the guys mm -hmm. on the outside. And Rasul Douglas just can't run with a guy like Stefan Diggs. Rasul Douglas is the guy you want covering a Kyle Rudolph or a Travis Kelsey. That's how he was used by the New England Patriots when he was there. He covered big really big receivers or cover the tight end who's that hybrid receiver tight end type of guy. This is not his game. And of course, Kirk Cousins throws an absolute perfect Throw pass. Perfectly, perfectly yep. on the hash about, I'm gonna say 45 yards down the middle of the field. And Rasul Douglas cannot run no. uh, with the and Stephon Diggs who's pissed off and happy to score a touchdown. I think both safeties, both safeties had that word that we talked about a lot hesitation they hesitated they just hesitated. a little bit because of that deep cross yes they did both they, of them did and but and 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 to that that's their rule though their rule is more to stop crosses right. and in cuts to squat on that like kind of stuff like you said at the beginning like nobody did anything wrong no nobody did anything wrong right every now yeah. and then they did you what know they were told. hey yeah even you know sometimes you call the uh, a play on offense and you think oh this play is good against any defense it doesn't matter and the defense calls a play where you go oh shit no not, right. it's not good against that defense yeah. we're screwed and this just happened to be one of those plays where yeah jim schwartz got caught in the wrong coverage at the wrong time and when we talk about you have to take advantage of opportunities or take advantage of what's there to be had, mm -hmm. that's the thing I've seen the last two weeks in the Minnesota Vikings. If there's a 50-yard bomb ready to be had, and they yeah. get all 50 of it. Yeah, what's you your know? feeling about the, the, the Kirk, Cousin and the Vikings, it's Kirk just, Cousins and the Vikings the last two weeks? Yeah. Is these games against, against the Giants and the Eagles, Yeah. after taking big steps back, Right. It feels like two years ago they were having like uh, what we perceived as internal problems with coaches and coordinators and receivers and quarterbacks. Right. They've been unstoppable. They've been unstoppable. They found the different schemes, different plays. I just a a 
a little bit again like the Green Bay Packers and I don't think it's quite as creative maybe as those teams but a just a more deeper vault of bootlegs and play mm -hmm. actions to where they're just going let's see how many we can invent yeah. and throw out there every week against this team to take advantage of it and that's what they they should do right you know they run the ball we know they want to do that yeah and then off of that yeah have a lot of different ways to make it all look the same but it's different yeah. and the other thing they do too which i respect and i think this is zimmer's um history with bill parcells they play a little bit of matchup football like, oh, no, our guy's better than your guy on the outside. We're just going right. to let him work your ass. Yeah. Oh, Thielen, you're one-on-one -on -one with Rasul Douglas? Run an out and up. He won't be, oh, that's the first touchdown. Out yeah. and up for a touchdown. I think there was a, there a little bit of that that goes on in their offense, which I really like. I don't think enough teams do that. Right. You know, New England does it. Uh, the Houston Texans do it. Um, they will just go dish Deshaun, you and DeAndre are better than that guy. We'll just make it happen. Mm -hmm. We're going to work you to death. And, you know, we've had games where we've gone – Damn, I mean, Deshaun's got 20 targets and caught 12 passes. Yeah. Michael Thomas and Drew Brees. Sean Payton, you know who he's with? Bill Parcells. So he does the same thing every now and then where he just goes, Drew, Michael, doesn't matter. You're better than that guy. We'll throw back shoulders and fades and you'll slant them and we'll just work them to death and make yeah. the guy think, who the hell knows what's going on? And I like that aspect of and Minnesota Cousins too. Cousins is hot now he is throwing hot. the ball downfield. So Remember hot. against the Bears? He wants to touch he the hiney. Barely, he barely <laughs> missed uh, Thielen. Uh, you know, Thielen, Thielen on the deep corner. Threw it like a yard and a half too right, far. Right, right. Like if, if, that's, if that's a yard less, yeah. maybe we're not talking about all, all the things no, we talked about maybe three weeks not. ago. No, you're right. Well, in that game, too, I don't think he was aggressive, too. Remember, if you remember, we talked about there was just some few other opportunities where in that game he wasn't aggressive with his mind thinking. I mean, his thinking. He, but, was, he, played, he has been the last He week. definitely yeah. has. He is. He is just letting it all hang out, and he is firing, and he's playing awesome. So uh, I respect that. And Minnesota, of course, we know their defense is good, um, but their offense I'm, I'm really impressed with, and I think they're a team that's going to continue to improve and stay on the right track. One more play. One more play for the day. I think, it, I think it's been a successful debut you like this? For, for, for this segment. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I like it too. Yeah. I think it gives us a central talk and then we can kind of go a little bit. So yeah. go ahead, say the name, Paul. What's this, you know? This, this is the final portion. Of us. And the first time we've ever done it, the segment called What the F***. Oh, yes. There we go. Oh, baby. Did you guys hear that? Paul swearing on the podcast. What a bad guy he is. Holy cow. Yes, shame, shame, sugar, shame. Everybody knows your name. Yeah. What a Did you make that up? <laughs> no. I, don't, I think somebody told me that when I was a kid. Uh, not, not that. Oh. Yeah, shame, shame. Sugar, shame. Yeah. Everybody knows your name. You never heard that? They didn't say no. that in Iowa? No. I don't know. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Oh, uh, that one that too. Was, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, but I don't know. It's a Jersey thing, I guess. I don't know where we got it. But, all right, here we go. Yeah. We're going to the Green Bay offense, okay, on our last segment of mm -hmm. what the f*** happened. Yes. And let's break down the, con the I don't want to say the conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy. The travesty okay. of the Trey Flowers. This one's new to me. Bakatiari. So, you know, educate me on, on what happened. Here. Okay, so at the end of the game, the fourth quarter, yep. there was two calls, one with about 10, 20 left in the fourth quarter, where it was a third down, and they called Trey Flowers for illegal hands to the face, right? Which is, can consist of the neck and above, okay? Extends the drive, Green Bay goes and down and scores a That's touchdown. That's where the face is? That, yeah, neck that is, the, the neck, neck to the face, yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 thank you, yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, so that happens, that happens on that drive. Then on the last drive of the game, there's another third down, and it gets called again, and in this moment, it gives Green Bay the first down, which then allows them to run the clock out, okay? and then kick the field goal with no time left to win the game. Where, in, in reality, if this last penalty does not get called, they're going to kick the field goal and then kick it back to Detroit. And Detroit's going to have enough time to mount a drive to go down to kick their own game-winning field goal. Right. So that's where it screwed them over. So I watched this very closely, okay? First off, we talked about Green Bay's offense and the things I'm excited about and my dad and all that. So it's, it's really good. OK, and our man, uh, Lazard, 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 uh, Lazard. He might be an Iowa State guy. Yes, he is an Iowa State guy. Undrafted. Yeah. yeah. Lazard. Lazard. I was saying it the wrong way. Yeah. Lazard. Lazard. He uh, did jumpstart this offense. It was good to have him out there. I think we're going to see him a lot. He's got tremendous size and physicality. And I think Aaron Rodgers is going to like that nonetheless. Also, just one other thing. The Green Bay 
Green Bay field on Monday night was an embarrassment mm. to the NFL, everybody. There was people slipping and sliding everywhere. I have a feeling they probably had the heaters on underneath the field, and it ended up being a little bit of a warmer night. Yeah. And it looks like the field turned to mush. Mm. And there is, from the get-go, the first snap of the game, people are slipping and sliding everywhere. Aaron Rodgers is awesome. I like to say that. Yeah. And, but now let's get back to the point, okay? <laughs> um, so the first penalty that happens to extend the drive, which he then will go down and throw a touchdown pass down the left side and the Lazard, Lazard uh, that was a perfect throw on an out-and-up type of uh, move by Lazard. But the first one, okay, it really starts two plays before the first penalty. Two plays before Trey Flowers rushes Bakhtiari, and Trey Flowers has this unbelievable talent of getting his hand inside the front horse collar. Is it legal? It is legal. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll be legal after this year, though, and after this game. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be one of those things where I think it's going to be looked at, especially because of the microscope on this game. Yeah. But he gets, he gets his – so if he's rushing off the right side, he gets his left hand in there, and instead of that Khalil Mack inside punch, he literally gets it and puts it perfectly in there to where he's got his hands inside the guy's shoulder pads, yeah. right? Now, you know how tight shoulder pads are on an NFL offensive lineman with their yeah. jerseys. It takes like – I, I can promise you, Bakatiari is taking three people to get him in his shoulder pads and jersey before the game, and then three people to get it off after the game. That's how tight that stuff is. So if you get your hand in there, you're gonna, I don't give a damn who you are. You're going to control that guy a little bit. So two plays before, he gets it in there and kind of gives him a push and then pulls him and throws Bakatiari to the ground. And Bakatiari's pissed. Mm -hmm. But he does not complaining to the ref or anything like that. But then the very next play, he gets him there again, okay? And he really gets a good push. And Bakhtiari's neck kind of snaps back. And if you're not watching closely, you go, ooh, he might have got his hands to his face there. And Bakhtiari this time kind of turns around to the ref a little bit. And this is where the gamesmanship starts. And so, and I think the ref kind of might have saw the head jolt back too to go, ooh, maybe I did miss it. All right. So no penalty here, though. But then the very next play, it happens again. And it's like right up here. So, you know, his fist is on his neck, but his hands aren't, like, on his neck, but he's got his hands in that shoulder pad. Yeah. And Bakatiari, who had just kind of complained to the ref, now the ref's his eyes are on it, and it happens again, and the ref throws the flag. Bam, there you go. So that extends that drive. That's what happens. Now we get down to the last play, okay? And there's uh, another two plays of this on the last drive of the game. And the first one... There is a play where Aaron Rodgers throws to Jimmy Graham. I think it's on a second down. I don't know. He throws a crossing route. He's kind of bouncing in the pocket, bouncing in the pocket. Nobody's open. And he throws a tight ball to his left to Jimmy Graham. Completion, first down. Same thing. Flowers gets it up in there. Bakhtiari's head snaps back. Okay. The ref goes to grab the flag. Doesn't throw it. Go, okay, good. Whatever. First down, first down, blah, blah, blah. A few plays go on. And... Now it's the big third down play, all right? And this is, there's two things at play on this last play. I think Bakhtiari really sells it. Again, here he comes off the edge. Trey Flowers, he puts his hands up in there again, and Bakhtiari really throws his head back. Like this time a little bit like, and I almost want to, it almost, and I'm looking on film, and I, I almost want to show you. Is he acting? I feel like he's acting a little bit. I want to say he almost gives a little yell and like a little throw of the hands mm -hmm. too. And the referee kind of sees it with the corner's eyes, and he throws, throws the flag. Now, to make anybody feel better on this play, there was, a, there was another penalty on the play, too. The guy that Aaron Rodgers wants to throw the ball to, which is Lazard, Lazard, I can't say this name. Cyclone. Lazard, Cyclone. Yeah. He's going to run a little corner route. He's going to be open, and it's going to be a touchdown. And he gets held. And so they could have called defense a holding on this play, too. So they didn't call it. I'm just trying to give some context to the whole play overall. But that's basically how it un uh, played out. And I want to show it to you just so you could see it real quick, and then we're going to end this podcast because I can't talk anymore, <laughs> and especially not to you. I've had enough of you, okay? Um, so here we go. I'm going to get right to it. It's right down here. Um, there are so many funny moments for the game. I'm really impressed with Green Bay's offense. I love Aaron Rodgers on this play where they're trying to run out the clock yeah. and he realizes Detroit's going to let them score. He's yelling at them like, go down, go down, look at him. He he's, he's, him yeah, he's, he's, yeah. he's yelling at him, go down, because he's realized they're trying to let him score and you can see him. And on TV, you could really see it. 
But, okay, I'm going to back up a little bit so we can get to this play. So give it a second here. Here's the play right here. There's Bakatiari. First off, I want you to see the holding. So you tell me if you think this is holding or not, all right? Um, this is where he wants to throw right here. Holding on. 20, this guy right here. Uh, all right, so there's Lazard. So, so here we got two, uh, two receivers to the left. Lazard's in the, Lazard is in the slot, and he makes a little move, and he's trying to work. And it's a hold. I, it's a hold, yeah. right? I mean, this is Justin Coleman. I mean, he is Grabs really him up holding. high and stays with him. It's stays not like with his him. hand got stuck there. No, for he continues second. to hold them, and yeah. he even gets another hand up there on it with him to look yep. at, and really make it egregious. So that goes on. That's just the context of the play. But here's the other one. So right there. See how he kind of his head jo jolts up? Okay. And let's go to the end zone cut so you can see it. So here's Trey Flowers. There's Bakatiari. And now Trey Flowers is going to come off the edge. He throws in that inside hand up there. And it's this part right here. See? So now, if you're standing where that referee is right there, it's hard to see because you're directly behind it. But you see his head snap Go back, back right? Yeah. You do see it, which yeah. is a little bit of an optical illusion and something the referees look for in these situations that usually do mean hands to the face. Okay? And there goes the flag. Yeah. And, of course, they get the first down, and it goes from there. I'd like to sit there and show you the other ones that set it all up, but you're just going to have to take my word for it. Which I do. Um, and um, so that was that, the big controversy of the week. It was a really fun game to watch. Rodgers was awesome. Detroit's on the right track. This is one other little thing I'll say. Detroit loves to play man-to-man. -man. And we talked about, like, Kansas City. They played man-to-man -man against Kansas City, like, the whole game. Right. They did not play as much man-to-man -man in this game as I thought just watching on TV. Why do you think they changed? Because the run game at Green Bay mm -hmm. and because they know the Green Bay schematics and their pass offense are less are mere, are, yes, less predictable than Kansas City. You know, I, I think you've heard me say Kansas City's more of, you know, the plays are good, but it's more about the players yeah. that make it really happen. You know, Green Bay is getting in this area where the players aren't that good, mm. but the plays are getting good. And I'm sure Matt Patricia was like, hey, I'd like to play man-to-man, -man, but I don't really have a beat on some of their tendencies. Huh. And, you know, we, I could be telling my guy, hey, this guy always does this when that guy does that. But they've shown that they will it. screw you over on a new week and do the opposite. And I'm afraid to do it and leave my guy like going, hey, this is going to happen. And then that happens. And all of a sudden, it's a 70-yard Aaron Rodgers bomb for a touchdown. Right. And that changes things. And that tells me that an offense is being creative and not being too predictable. Green Bay, the third best team in the NFC. Yes, to. they are, and they're dangerous, and they, and they keep this going because their defense is damn good, and Rodgers and this run game keep going. Watch out for Green Bay, and especially when Devontae Adams gets back. All right, we're done. We're done. That's it. That's it. We're saying goodbye. All right. All right. Good shit. Good to, good to see you. You're the man. Yeah. I appreciate you swearing, too. Way tired to of me. Yeah. I, I'm not tired of you. I'm just tired in dinner. general. Yeah, no, you're not. Sorry. You're not invited <laughs> yet. Uh, all right, everybody. Hope everybody's good. Hope everybody enjoyed episode number 79 of Chris Sims Up Button. That's what we're going to do from now on. We are going to do what the f*** happened, a.k.a. what the hell happened, yeah, and dive good. into the big plays of the week. I hope everybody enjoyed the big plays of what the f*** happened in week six. Uh, everybody be good. Tomorrow I will be doing my PFT PM podcast collaboration where I pick. I put Mike's butt this week. That's always fun. I'm going to rub it in. Everybody have a good week. Paul, say goodbye. 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 See ya. See I'll ya. be listening tomorrow. Okay, cool. I'll listen to you guys. Yeah. All right. Peace out. See ya. Done. Out of here. Bye. Maybe I'll phone. Yo, yo, what's up? Come on, man. Subscribe on YouTube to Chris Sims Unbuttoned Podcast. I need you. Please hit the subscribe button, please.